Okay, in section A4, we're going to be graphing other fractions. We graphed in A3 just a certain kind of rational functions, and now we're going to expand it to some other rational functions. Um, two different cases we're going to look at. First case we're going to look at is where the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. We've learned before that degree means the largest exponent. So it just means you're going to have a bigger exponent in the bottom than you do the top. Um, so what you're going to do in this case, you're going to check your asymptotes, vertical and horizontal. So vertical asymptote is going to be determined. by the x value or values where your denominator equals zero. Because you know that your fraction cannot have a denominator of zero. So we get, we have a problem. If your denominator equals zero, that's a problem. So that's an asymptote. Uh, then horizontal asymptote. As long as you're in this case, the horizontal asymptote is f of x equals zero. No, eight, three. The problems we did in A3, they actually fall into this case. And you may say, well, we didn't always have a horizontal asymptote of zero. Um, you, you're right. We don't have a horizontal asymptote of zero if there was a k value. But if there was no k value, it was a zero. And we won't have a k value in this section. So that's why we'll be able to see that. So there's case one. Let's go ahead and do a few examples. Um, from this case before we get into case two. So we're going to graph f of x equals 4 over, I'm actually going to put in graph and factor form already, x plus 2 times x minus minus. So if we're going to graph this, let's check our vertical asymptote or asymptotes. That's where our denominator equals zero. So our denominator is going to equal zero if either of those factors equals zero. There's actually two vertical asymptotes here, negative two and positive three. As for horizontal asymptote, we said that that's just f of x equals zero. Because the degree of your numerator, in this case, it's actually a zero. There's no x there, so it's a degree of zero. The degree of your denominator, now it's in factored form. So it's a little misleading. It looks like it's a degree of one. But this also has a degree of one. And if you multiplied it out, if you foiled it out, you would have an x squared. So it's actually a degree of two. Um, so if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then this is the case we're looking at. That horizontal asymptote is zero. Uh, so let's go ahead and kind of start sketching a graph, those asymptotes. Make a graphing background. So at x equals negative 2, we have a horizontal asymptote. And at x equals positive 3, we have one. And so for this graph, it's different than what we did in A3 because there's actually three sections. We actually have, you know, the portion of the graph that's to the left of negative, uh, of negative 2. 
And then there's a portion of the graph that's in between the two asymptotes. And then finally, the portion that's to the right of. I actually need to figure out what the graph looks like in each of those three sections. So when I make a table of values, I'm going to make a table of values that helps me with that. So I need some numbers that are to the left of negative 2, like maybe a negative, I might actually want a few points, but a negative 3, negative 4. Let's start with those and see if maybe we need any more than that. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually plugging this into the calculator, to the graphing calculator. I'm going to use the table function. It's a good strategy. Otherwise, you can plug them in manually. Plug in negative 3, see what you get. Um, 0 0.67. Plug in negative 4, we get 0 0.29. If I go just a little bit farther to negative 5, 0 0.17. So there's a few points I can go ahead and add to my graph. Um, and it looks like as I travel to the left, it's getting smaller and smaller. It seems to be getting closer to zero, like zero is acting as horizontal asymptote. Well, we said, I didn't, I forgot to write that on there. Mark that one on there, that would have been helpful to see. That makes a little more sense now. You see that we're getting closer and closer to that. And so then, can't touch that vertical asymptote either. So we get, you know, what looks like a branch of a hyperbola. Okay, so there's one part of our graph. Now I want to know what's happening between the negative 2 and the positive 3. So maybe I could check like negative 1, 0, and 1 and 2. Let's just maybe check all of those. So go back to my calculator. I see that I've got negative 1, negative 1. I get 0, negative 0.67. One is also a negative 0.67. And at two, I get to negative one. And so it does actually in between get a little bit higher, but not much. So then I know I can't cross asymptotes. So it looks a little bit parabolic, although par parabolas continue to the left and the right forever. And this is limited by those asymptotes. Okay. And so then what's happening to the right of three? Maybe we try like a, a four, a five, a six. Again, four, you get 0.67. Plug in five, we get 0.29. Plug in six, we get 0.17. Same numbers we had up above on the other side of the graph. Kind of a mirror of that. It looks like a branch of a hyperbola. And there's our graph. Now, what about domain and range? We had two x values we couldn't use this time. So x doesn't equal um, negative 2. Additionally, x doesn't equal positive 3. For the range? We ne it never equaled zero. There's actually probably a little bit bigger section because this middle section didn't get super close to zero. 
I think got to maybe 0 0.64. So there's probably a little bit bigger area, but I can't, I can't really get an answer. Um, I could do more examples like this, um, like problems from last section. They all fit in there too, and we already kind of know what those look like. So instead of spending more time on this case, um, I would rather you have some time to work on your assignment. Um, so let me jump to the next case. Technically, there are three cases, but we are only going to look at two. If you look at your book, you'll see all three of them shown. Um, but our assignment and what you're asked to do on your quiz um, is really just over two cases. That's what I'm going to focus on in these notes. Maybe in class when I'm there with you live, we can look at the other case, but we're going to focus on two today. Um, so the other one is when the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. Vertical asymptote, it's the exact same. I just don't necessarily feel like writing that again. Um, but it's still determined by the denominator when the denominator equals zero. Your horizontal asymptote, though, is different. It's going to be a fraction this time. You're going to look at the lead coefficient of the numerator. Over the lead coefficient of the denominator. So let's take a look at one of these. So in this case, notice it's, it looks kind of like what we did in the last section, but there is an X in the numerator. For your vertical asymptote, look at your denominator. Set it equal to zero. Think about what x can be. Solve that. You'd add three over. You get x equals three. That's your vertical asymptote. For your horizontal asymptote, because the degree is the same in the top and the bottom, remember, degree is your largest exponent. So here there was no exponent, so we know it's a 1, because there is an x there. Same thing down here. They both have the same degree. Um, so then we look at the leading coefficients. Well, this leading coefficient is 1. This one's 1. 1 over 1 is just 1. So let's put those asymptotes on there. Vertical is the 3. Horizontal is at 1. Table of values. Fortunately, there's only one asymptote this time. So I only have the two sections. I need to go to the left and to the right, similar to what we did in the last section. So um, I would go to 2 and 1. And then to the right of three would be like four and five. So plug in one, plug it into the numerator and denominator. When you plug it into the numerator, I get five. Plug it into the denominator, I get negative two. So that's negative 2.5. 
Then plug in 2. Numerator becomes 6. Denominator becomes negative 1, so negative 6. Then plug in 4. 4 plus 4 is 8 over 1 is 8 total. Plug in 5, we get 9 over 2, so that's 4.5. All right, so 1, negative 2.5. 2, negative 6. And then 4, 8. And then 5, 4.5. And then, let's see, domain and range. Um, domain, x cannot be 3. For a range, f of x cannot be 1. Okay, one more example for this section, this case something that's a little bit more complex. What if I had x squared minus 4 over x squared? Uh, maybe a, we'll go with a 2x squared, actually. Um, minus 50. So the degree is the same. Degrees are 2 and 2. So it does fall into this case. For vertical asymptote, set your denominator equal to 0. So 2x squared minus 50 equals 0. I would add 50 to both sides. Divide by 2. Square root plus or minus because we're square rooting. So we actually have two asymptotes there. For a horizontal asymptote, because the degrees are the same, look at lead coefficients. First one has a lead coefficient of 1, the second one is 2, so 1 over 2, or 1 half. Start a graph. So vertical asymptotes at 5 and at negative 5. Horizontal is at 1 half. I'm going to plug this into the calculator just to save a little bit of time. We're going to make a table of values. So I need to pick a couple things maybe to the left of negative 5, like negative 7 and negative 6. So the calculator tells me that I get, you can just go ahead and write these numbers down. about negative 0.94 and 1.45 not real nice numbers so using the calculator can be um, pretty helpful and so I can go ahead and connect the dots not crossing my asymptotes um, but then I want to stay between negative 5 and 5 
maybe like negative four. Would be a good thing to check. Uh, if I jump all the way over to positive four, that's worth knowing too, because it's closest to the other asymptote. And I get the same number. But I'd like to know some things that are happening between. So like zero, for example. Um, maybe at two. At two, zero. And um, what if I go to like negative two? Also get zero. So kind of get an idea when I graph those what's happening. And we know we can't touch across asymptotes. So maybe something looks a little bit like a parabola. And then we can go to the right of five, maybe like six and seven. We see some symmetry happening here. Same numbers that we had up above with positive six and positive seven. And so for our domain, there were two things x couldn't equal. x couldn't equal negative five and x couldn't equal positive five. For your range, never equaled our horizontal asymptote, which is one half. All right, then you should be able to now get to work on your assignment. You will find your assignment on Canvas. Go ahead and um, uh, spend any remaining time on that.